Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Saturday mountain weather update. My first stop is to British Columbia. This is Revelstoke, and it's a powder day up there, and you've got at least a few more powder days to go because it's going to continue to snow for the next few days. Um, so reporting 16 cm, about 6 inches in the last 24 hours. And you can see a beautiful uh, camera there with the gnome covered in snow. And now as far as the temperatures, village base, it's plus 2. So we're above freezing down at the bottom. And that kind of goes to the concern I had for the rain snow line moving to a higher elevation because of the warmer air that's being blown in by this moist Pacific flow. So that's going to continue to be a concern of mine. I think that rain snow line could run anywhere from 4,000 to 4,800 feet at times up there uh, in interior British Columbia. So you're going to have to be higher up on the mountain to get the, uh, the better snow. All right, let me show you what radar looks like across the west. So we're high and dry across most of the inner mountain. The action is up in the Pacific Northwest. That's where the flow is going to be directed. Oregon. Washington, BC, central to northern Idaho, and northwest Montana. Those are going to be the prime locations. There's an area of low pressure that will dislodge uh, between the 23rd and the 25th and will come down a little bit further to the south into parts of Idaho and it will nail the Tetons and then kind of move through. But otherwise, the flow is going to be directed up into the Pacific Northwest. In fact, there is a bit of an atmospheric river contribution. So I've got this set to uh, Washington State along the coast, and notice today, tomorrow, and even into uh, Monday, Tuesday, there's weak to moderate uh, atmospheric river contributions. So this has definitely got uh, some some extra moisture that it's it's got to work with, and it's tossing it up there into the coast and along the uh, the high cascades and the volcanoes. All right, here is the uh, the water vapor satellite imagery. Oranges and reds are going to be your drier air in the low levels. Your moisture is going to be in the whites and the blues. You could see the moist flow right here. That is basically your storm track. So whatever moisture and whatever storm systems are out here gets moved into that general area. And what we're going to find in the coming days, there's my blue, and basically the coming week, that this this area of high pressure is going to set up somewhere in here and that's going to protect a lot of the desert southwest keep it dry and the temperatures are just going to shoot through the roof um, it's going to get very warm now there is that one storm system that will dislodge somewhere in there and it will come down and sweep through idaho montana and wyoming and then out it may gently brush the Wasatch and gently brush the northern mountains of Colorado on its way through. And, and that's somewhere between 23, 24, and 25. Okay, let me, um, let me just look at my bullet points here. So I talked about the southwest high-pressure ridge that's coming. The moist uh, Pacific Northwest BC flow runs into uh, 225. The rain snow line concern, Rebel Stoke, up to 4,800 feet is possible where you could see rain snow mixing. Central Idaho, it's up to 6,000 feet, potentially. Well, that's kind of high. Northwest Montana, potentially up to 4,800 feet, so that's high too. So you're really going to have to be high up to get the best snow accumulation out of all of this. All right, here's my snow timeline. Best odds of snow for Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So, for example, in Big Sky, you've got some moderate to maybe heavy accumulation coming afternoon 223 24 and 25 but more likely the heavy accumulation is up in northwest montana whitefish glacier um, snowball discovery all those areas um, in the wasatch light a light brush 223 into 224 tetons heavy accumulation 223 into 25 Colorado, light brush. Interior BC, your powder days continue all the way into 225. Pacific Northwest, heavy accumulations at the higher elevations. And then everything else is pretty light on the board. Let me drill down into um, Alta, Utah. So this is going to be uh, out at about 9,000 feet. Notice the forecast is dry today. It's dry Sunday. It's dry most of Monday. And then late Monday evening into early Tuesday, that's the brush with that uh, errant storm system that comes through. And this puts out about three, three and a half inches of snow. 
um, little in big cottonwood canyons. The winds might increase a bit before that happens. Um, but high temperatures up there are going to get warm. 29, almost, well, yeah, basically 30 if you round up today. 34 on Sunday. 34 on Monday. And still in the 30s on Tuesday. That's the cost of high pressure right there. Okay, let me go to um, Jenny Lake, Wyoming. So Jenny Lake, Wyoming, this is effective about 86, 8,700 feet. Uh, winds gradually increasing today, tomorrow, and then they start to gust to 50 and 60 miles per hour. So it is going to be a windy Sunday and a windy Monday. And notice the precip comes in. Here's your snow. Now this model accumulates between Sunday afternoon and Monday morning about 10 inches. I think it could be more, and I think it might snow into early 25. So that's where I'm getting my additional accumulation. I think it could be closer to a foot. Temperature-wise, today 24 up there, 29 tomorrow, and 31, basically 31 on Monday. So we've got a few warm days ahead here across the west. All right, jet stream pattern will uh, paint the picture here. So what I'm looking for in this are the brighter colors. This is jet stream level wind at about 30,000 feet. Um, storm track essentially, and this is what guides storm systems around the country, around the globe, separates warm air from cold air, helps to spot high pressure. So we'll start at about 11 o'clock today. I'm going to move this ahead. I and mean, you can see that all those bright colors up in the Pacific Northwest in BC, that area is just getting nailed. So is central and northern Idaho, northwest Montana. But this is 11 a.m. on Sunday. Okay, here's a, here is uh, the afternoon and evening of Monday the 24th. Look up to the Pacific Northwest. You can see a storm system. There's a dip in the jet. That, that, that storm makes its way down into the interior. Notice the flow shifts a little bit, and it's favoring central and northern Idaho in the Tetons at this point. And there's an area of low pressure embedded within. That's the one that brushes Utah and brushes Colorado. You can see it right there. That's early on the 26th, and then it departs into the plains. And then look at this massive high pressure ridging, the arcing of the jet to the north across the west. Guys, that's going to be a warm period. 25, 26, 27, 28. Um, that is going to be it. And there's a little bit of a cutoff low in California, but that's a lot of high pressure too. Um, that's late on the 28th, and we're still arcing the jet to the north with high pressure ridging. Okay, let's look at snow accumulation over time. So on this map, when you see the light blues, that's under three inches of accumulation. Um, greens are three to six. Yellows are six plus. Red's 10 plus. So your snow up there in the Pacific Northwest, Washington State, Northern Idaho, Northwest Montana. 11 o'clock today. There's the evening hours. There's late today. The snow really picks up in the coastal range of BC tonight. You can see the reds. And then it, it, it flashes into the interior parts of BC. So it looks like a push of heavy snow tonight into tomorrow morning for a lot of BC, both coastal and interior. And some of that's going to drop down into Schweitzer, up into northwest Montana. Here's 11 a.m. tomorrow. There is late on Sunday the 23rd. Notice the flow shifting to the south. It's going to start to target the rest of Idaho and the Tetons getting in on the action. There's late on the 24th, and there's a tiny bit there, maybe brushing the Wasatch in parts of uh, the northern, central and northern mounds of Colorado. I mean, it's it's so faint and so weak. <laughs> uh, here's late on the 26th. Here's late on the 27th, and guys, there's just nothing across the west at this point. It's all high pressure. Everything's being dumped down to the Great Lakes in the northeast. Uh, there's late on the 28th, and the west is, it is acutely high and dry. Okay, let me, uh, here's my forecast. Here's what uh, I've got going on. Um, they're all of today, the rest of today through the 25th, 1 to 3 inches across the Wasatch, 10 to 12 for the Tetons. Um, <clears throat> in Montana, I've got 6 for Big Sky and Bridger Bull, but over a foot for Whitefish, Discovery, and Snowball at the higher elevations higher elevations. 
Central and Northern Montana, I've got a couple of feet higher elevations. Interior BC, I've got another 14 to 20 inches to go from Fernie to Red Mountain to uh, Kicking Horse and Revelstoke. And 6 to 12 down in Sunshine up to Marmot. Across the Pacific Northwest, 1 to 3 feet of accumulation. And then <clears throat> a little bit over Shasta and Mount Ashland, but some of that amount Mount Ashland is going to be... It, the number would be higher, but I think it's going to be mixing with rain at times. Very little for the Sierra, if anything. Now in Colorado, we might get an inch or two of accumulation as that storm system between 24, 25 kind of drops down and brushes, just kind of nicks the, the mountains and nothing for New Mexico. It's going to be a difficult stretch. And this takes us through the 25th. And to be quite honest, I, there really isn't anything between the 25th and the 28th, 29th. All right, in the northeast, through the 25th, very little snow. No big blockbuster storm systems, zero to two inches, and that's probably going to do it. All right, guys, let's end on the western map here. Enjoy the next uh, few days, especially if you're up in the Pacific Northwest, B.C., Idaho, Northwest Montana, or even the Tetons. Tetons, again, you've got that snow coming 23 to 25. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.